do you ever feel just kind of bad about yourself or maybe you should be thinner or smarter and I mean, definitely a better mom, <laughs> right? I know many of us think these things and you might not even realize that your stuff is actually playing a really big role in how you feel. So Dr. John Deloney is in town today. He's a mental health expert and author of the book, Own Your Past, Change Your Future. And so I thought we could visit with him and get his take on toxic clutter. How do we detach from it, move it out of our house and start to feel so much better about ourselves? So today we're gonna talk about toxic clutter. I was talking with a group of women about this and well, first we have to define what toxic clutter is and then we'll talk about all the things that came to mind for them. So toxic clutter is anything that makes us feel bad about ourselves. Uh, when we look at it, we feel overweight. We feel like we're irresponsible with our money. We feel like we can't stand up to others. The list goes on and on. So it's those things in our house that when we look at it, it brings up really bad thoughts and emotions. What's an example of that? Examples are clothes that don't fit, exercise equipment we're not using, hobby items that we're not using, projects we've started and haven't finished. And oh, another good one that came up was, what do I do with the photos after I've gotten divorced? Ooh, man. Maybe you can help us understand why do we feel this obligation to keep this stuff in the first place? And then we can talk about sorting through if we get rid of it or not. I think with those items you just mentioned, we buy things like exercise equipment, we buy things like clothes, thinking that we're gonna feel a certain way when we achieve whatever these things symbolize, right? Mm -hmm. And in counseling, we call it the tyranny of accomplishing all your dreams. If you lose 100 pounds, the best part about that is you just lost 100 pounds. The worst part of it is you went with you, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. You get the new date, you get the new shirt, you get the new car, you go with you. And we have this illusion that that's gonna solve us, mm -hmm. right? So that's number one. Number two is, if we don't make it, it's just this idol of shame. Mm -hmm. And so I can't let that go yet because then I'd be admitting that I can't get out of debt. I can't yeah. lose my weight. Right. I can't yep. quit eating whatever. Mm -hmm. And so we just keep it. Because once we admit it, yeah. then I gotta own it. Because it feels like, well, if I get rid of the clothes that are two sizes smaller, that means I'm just committing to being this size for the rest of my life then. I'm a quitter, right? yeah. I'm a failure, mm -hmm. and those are all identity markers. Right, and I think for a lot of us too, you know, if I'm looking at maybe the blender in the kitchen that I bought, you know, from an infomercial, and I, in my mind I'm thinking, <laughs> The only way to make this right is to start using it and to find the recipes and to start using the blender. And that's really the only way I can think of to like right this wrong purchase. Yeah. And again, if I get rid of it, then I suck. Well, and it's, there's, there's that sunk, fall, sunk cost fallacy, right? Mm -hmm. That happens with businesses. Your business is losing money and you can't just, you're like, I've already put a million dollars into it, so mm -hmm. I might as well put $2 million into it. We don't ever ask ourselves the question, is this thing gonna make it? We're like, yeah. we're already this far, so we gotta just keep going, and there's something magic about saying, okay, I put a million bucks in this company, it's not gonna work, yeah. I'm gonna grieve this, I'm gonna be mm -hmm. sad about it, and now I'm gonna go do something else with my life, right? right. I bought something stupid, <laughs> okay, I bought something stupid, I'm gonna go on about my life. Right, but, so then, okay, if we do just say, okay, I'm just gonna box all this stuff up, I'm gonna donate it, I'm gonna sell it on Marketplace, now, still here I am, and John, like I actually really do need to lose weight, mm -hmm. or I really did want to make scrapbooks for all of my grandkids, so now do I just accept like, okay, well this is where I am now? I like to use those moments as data. So I bought a treadmill, and I'm gonna run 24 miles a day, I'm gonna lose all this weight on this treadmill, and then nine months later, it's piled over with clothes, yeah. and it's just sitting there, right? Mm -hmm. And my husband or wife's just banging up against it, and they're annoyed by it. I still need to take care of my body. I'm gonna be a good steward of my body. I've got to come up with some ways I'm gonna be healthy. And I can also say it's not gonna be on a treadmill. Yeah. Right? It's yeah. it's not mutually exclusive. Right. So this particular path didn't work for me. Yeah. I've got pairs of running shoes because I'm mm -hmm. just gonna turn into a runner. Yep. And I always forget. My wife, I, they'll come in the mail. My wife will be like, oh, so we're doing, you're, you're trying this again. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, oh, geez. Right. Um, but I have stumbled on in my garage, like a small home gym that mm -hmm. really works for me, yeah. right? And so it's not quitting just because I ran up against a thing. Yeah. I bought this cool blender to like make smoothies on infomercial. I'm not, I'm not a smoothie guy, right? right. So I'm gonna say that was stupid. I should have thought through that. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can practice before I go buy something. So I'm gonna get rid of it. I'm gonna yeah. move on with my day. Well, and I found too that most often I don't need the thing to be healthy, right? Like I could <laughs> use the shoes I have and go walk outside 
and then reward myself with a new pair of shoes when I'm like, oh yeah, I've been doing it for a couple of weeks and my feet hurt because I don't have good shoes, right? That's right. And yeah. so we start the habit and then we reward ourselves. Like I could be a healthy person eating wise even without a blender. That's right. right? It's when so, I found out my granddad, I grew up in Texas, we, we come from a hunting family. And I had all of this really fancy, like disappearing camouflage gear. There's like high tech and research, but and when I found out my granddad hunted in like a red flannel shirt <laughs> and jeans, and he did just fine. And I was yeah. like, oh, it's not the gear. I don't need right. more junk, man. Right. I just need to shut up and go be quiet and sit. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah it's always, that's always the joke now is I just need more gear. Like, no, you don't, man. Yeah. You just need to go and have fun with your life. And so do you think, though, we'll, we'll talk about, like, the divorce photos in a second, but do you think if we would be willing to let this stuff go from our house, do you think that's going to make a difference on our mental health, how we feel? So is, is it worthwhile to, to do this? This is very unpopular, and it's just the science. And we were talking about this before. OCD, ADHD, anxiety, all these things have a direct neurological response to chaos in an environment. Mm -hmm. I wish that wasn't the case, but yeah. it's just true. And so when you look over the last 100 years, if you just took a graph of stuff accumulation mm -hmm. and the mental health statistics, you can just lay them on top of it, and they look yeah. exactly the same, right? Mm -hmm. We're surrounded by so much junk, and yeah. our brains can't process it. And you put on top of that how much of that junk is purchased with a credit card, yeah. and our brains know we're not, we're not safe because yeah. we owe this person money and that person money. It's just too much. And so, yeah. yes, I hear it all the time. I feel it all the time. Mm -hmm. People start decluttering and start getting ready to get rid of so much stuff, mm -hmm. and they find peace. And they're like, yeah. I'm not so anxious anymore. I'm sleeping yeah. better. My kids aren't all wound up all the time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's worth taking the loss and getting it out of your house. So, okay, those were kind of actually fairly simple examples. What about if, you know, wedding photos, if I'm divorced? What about gifts that my parents gave me and expect to see when they come over? Items that I've inherited? Do I have some kind of obligation? Is there like this moral obligation <laughs> <laughs> for me hmm. to keep this stuff? So I'll put divorce photos over here because I think it's okay, a that's fabulous a question. No one's yeah. ever asked me that, and okay. I want to work through that one. I think when it comes to keeping gifts other people gave us, um, meeting other people's expectations, mm -hmm. that comes from a place where I am trying to outsource my value to other people. Mm. I'm giving other people input on whether I have value, whether I'm worthy, whether I'm a good mom, whether I'm a good dad, whether I'm a good husband or good wife. And that's you will chase that mm -hmm. right off the edge of a cliff. Sure. Right? And so it's asking yourself, what is the greatest gift I can give for my family when they come to visit? A peaceful home. Yeah. And if a peaceful home is not having 14 cake plates piled up in, right. in the, let's give her some cake plates. Right. And if mom asks, I'm going to look at my mom and I'm going to tell her the truth. Yeah, I met somebody at work that really needed that, and so I, I let them have it because I had seven. I yeah. had seven. And that's not an indictment of your mom. Mm -hmm. And if your mom, here's the thing, if your mom chooses to let that inform her mental health, yeah. that's her grown-up choice to do. Right. But I'm not going to own that. Right. And I think that's maybe sometimes the disappointing part is it could reveal maybe some weaknesses in our relationship. It always does. Yeah, and we're like, oh, like... And so here I am trying to manage how they're going to respond. Real, and what we don't realize is like, well, if, I, if it's not the cake plate, they're probably going to find something else to, mm -hmm. to yeah. you know, pick a fight about or whatever. So. Well, and, we, and, and it's been my experience that women are way disproportionately put in the role of peacekeepers. Mm -hmm. And they are way disproportionately put in the position to be responsible for the emotional regulation of the adults in, the, in their mm -hmm. lives. So it's, and to manage the stuff in the house. That's right. Yeah. Right. And so that's, that's not your job. Yeah. Your job isn't to make sure mom doesn't get mad. Your mm -hmm. job isn't to make sure dad doesn't lose his temper. That's their grown up job. Mm -hmm. And if they can't handle it, then they just, they're not invited. Yeah. Right. My job is to make sure that I'm in sync with my partner, that I've got a home and a life that is peaceful. I can build a non anxious life so that people who enter into it can mm -hmm. go, ah, yeah. right. That's a great gift. Yeah. Okay, so then let's circle back to the divorce okay, photos. Divorce photos. So um, I was having a conversation with somebody recently, and it was a fabulous conversation. Husband and wife were talking. Husband says, hey, you never asked me about people I used to date. And his wife's response was, yeah, I couldn't handle it. They've been married for years. Hmm. And I thought, that's a strange question. Like, <laughs> I, I, of course, as a counselor, I like, want to jump in. Like, wait a minute. Sounds like there's parts of him you don't accept. Mm -hmm. And she said, yeah, you're right, but I still don't want to go down that rabbit hole. And so I backed out and I was like, okay, 
let me think through this because I know the only way truly to heal from anxiety is directly through it. Okay. Right? Yep. You've got to go through it. Yep. And what would I think? I've been married to the same person 20 years. What would I think if she'd been married before? Well, I want to sit down and look at their wedding photos. Right. Right? Right. That's hard. Yeah. And so this is one of those cases I think is kind of messy. And yeah. I think it's probably going to depend on person to person. Mm -hmm. What I always want to ask myself is, why am I keeping this photo? Mm -hmm. And why am I getting rid of this photo? If I'm getting rid of this photo so my new boyfriend, my new husband, my new wife, they can't handle it, that's going to be a red flag in your relationship okay. because they're marrying somebody who's already been married before. You've already been on a honeymoon before. You've already said I love you before. You've already said I'm in this forever before. Yeah. If I'm marrying into that, I've got to own that. Sure. I've got to be a part of this. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to get my nose rubbed in it. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. so, it's, so it's both and. Um, right. If I'm keeping these photos, is it because I still have some emotional attachment to what was? Mm -hmm. Is it because I've got kids and that's their mom and we're gonna, I'm not gonna dishonor their mom. Like, right. so it, it's a broad question, yeah. but I think there's something about making peace with the roads that we traveled and really looking forward. So when you sent the question, I actually called a buddy on the way over who'd been divorced and um, said he felt an immense amount of peace when he deleted the last photo. Mm. He said, I just felt lighter. Okay. Like I'm in this new relationship, I'm in this new world, yeah. and it's not like it didn't happen. Right. But I'm, I'm living my life this way. Yeah. Right? And there's no kids involved. So there, there's less complexity. Yeah. But that spoke to me. Like I'm, I'm, I'm free of this. Yeah. And so maybe it is just saying, let's just remove the obligation, right? There's no one, there's, there's actually no one saying you have to keep this, right? Right. So then you have the freedom to choose. Yeah, I can look at that. It was a good day. Like I've heard women say, well, I really loved my wedding day mm -hmm. and I loved seeing the people that were there, my bridesmaids. And so if you look at those photos and you're like, yeah, I, I like being reminded of that day, right. then that's great. But if it's more on the toxic end of the scale of like, wow, that brings up every other <laughs> right. emotion, yeah. then you would have permission to let those photos go. Yeah. And I... I think we're in a strange place. Uh, I tend to go back and say, okay, how did our brains get from there to here, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, photographs are one or 200 years older and then they became everywhere just 20, 30, 40 sure. years ago. Yeah. Our brains don't have the wiring to see pictures of itself at four or five years old. This is new. We're asking okay. something new of our bodies. Okay. And so we were designed to have these experiences, these traumas, these good moments, and they become integrated into who we are. The old saying, your childhood biography becomes your adult biology, that's mm -hmm. very true. Yeah. We aren't designed to go back and look at pictures of ourselves when we're 20 and mm. compare our... Per so we're that's in uncharted waters. Okay. And so my default setting has yeah. changed over the years. Sure. I delete way more photos than I keep. Yeah. Because I'm more interested in living in the present yeah. and working towards the future than I am trying to park myself in the past, yeah. right? I tend to look at pictures of my kids in the past and be like, oh, remember when they used to? And remember, mm -hmm. and I begin to compare it to yeah. them now, and mm -hmm. that's not healthy. It's right. just not. And I, right. I, I love the pictures of my kids when they're young. Oh, it's so beautiful and great. Yeah. And I remember hugging them. But that does take away from my 12-year-old, hairy-legged, smelly seventh grader now. <laughs> it does, right? Because right, right. I compare them to, remember when we used to? Yeah. It's different now, it's and true. I need to be fully locked in here. So yeah. I'm more on the delete it, Yeah. take Keep fewer photos, and mm -hmm. live more in your, in your present. That's just, that's just me. Yeah. And I do think, we didn't mention it on the list, I do think kids stuff can become guilty or toxic clutter too when you feel like you need to archive their whole childhood. It's insane. Right? It is absolutely mm -hmm. insane. Yeah. We've made the, our children the centers of our universes, yeah. and they can't carry that weight. Mm -hmm. They're not designed to carry that yeah. weight. Yeah, that's good. Okay, two more questions. One because I do want to circle back to the financial burden of this stuff too. But what if we inherited a bunch of stuff, maybe it was my husband's, I don't want it. I don't want to manage it. I, I have no emotions, memories attached to it. And frankly, I don't even know if he really does, but he just feels like he's expected to keep, it, yeah. to keep it. How do you navigate that? I had this conversation with myself. So I had, my granddad died several years ago. He's a World War II vet. He lived to be 94. He's an amazing guy. Um, and we had a pretty close connection. He had a suit jacket, like, but it was one I'll never wear. It was old school, but it was his. Mm -hmm. And I was going through my closet and I was cleaning stuff out. And then I was, I try to do these, make these loops, like I, stuff just accumulates in our house yep. and I'm making a loop out. 
and I picked it up and I started to put it back and I had this thought and I said it out loud. My granddad's not inside this jacket. Yeah. This jacket is not the representation of my relationship with my granddad. Mm. I will never wear this and now I'm allowing a memory of a man that I love to weigh me down in the present. Yeah. And I sent it away. Yeah. And in no way has it diminished my relationship. And yeah. so the way me and my wife navigate this is, is what makes sense in our home? Is there a piece of furniture we actually need? Mm -hmm. And it's cool to have an old piece of furniture. Yeah. I'm not going to disrupt my day-to-day -day life yeah. to shove something in there yep. at the pseudo honoring. Mm -hmm. If it takes cramming a piece of old particle board furniture in your house to honor your dad right. or mom who's passed, you did a terrible job honoring. You know what I mean? That's not, that's not honor, right? Yeah. That's clutter. It's, yeah. it's garbage. And so I think it's, it's removing ourselves from these objects mm -hmm. and being able to... It, it, it's it's an avoidance of grief. Well, I say I think I've heard you say that guilt is sometimes misplaced grief, right? right? That per, perhaps we're not done grieving that we're person. We haven't grieved them, yeah. and we've placed them in objects, and we're mm -hmm. going to drag that object around from apartment to apartment to house yeah. to house, pretending mom's still with us. Mom's not. Mom's gone. Yeah. Mom's here. Yeah. But mom's gone. Yeah. And mom's in the letters. That's great. But mom's gone, and it's fully grieving that. And then, man, then you can get rid of that chest of drawers that's just killing you, right? Yeah. Well, and you know, the last time we visited, we talked about that, how grief needs a witness. Mm -hmm. And I challenged the women in our, in our private group to be like, okay, let's process with each other. If you have items in your house, like share it, tell us the story, and then just let me know, does that make it easier mm -hmm. to pass that item on? And hands down, they were like, wow, I feel like I can let this item uh, go now because I told the story yeah. of it and I shared about it. So I do think sometimes we have to invite someone else into this process. Always, every time. Yeah. There's, not, there's not a time that you can't, you, yeah. that you can grieve fully without other people. Yeah. And I also think it's not just when you lose somebody. Okay. It's grieving. My daughter's in first grade now. Yeah. She's not a toddler. Yeah. And so her little ram scrambles, whatever drawing of wolf dragons that she was drawing, like, I keep those drawings because I haven't grieved the fact that she's not a toddler anymore. She's yeah. grown up, right? Yeah. And so grief happens at this micro level too. Yeah. It's just acknowledging things were and now things are. Yeah. And I'm going to I'm going to honor that gap and then I'm going to go on about my day. I'm going to put that stuff in the trash because it's ter it's not good art. It's terrible, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, so real quick then, let's just circle back to the burden of debt. So I've a lot of this toxic clutter, mm -hmm. um, the the reason it is toxic is because I look at it and I say I spent a lot of money on that. And so I've, I've heard it said recently that what's really difficult for us as humans is to forgo an immediate thing that's going to make us feel good mm -hmm. for a bigger goal like getting out of debt, yeah. right? So to pass up, Black Friday's going to be coming up, all the shopping, mm -hmm. right? So to pass that up for this bigger goal of getting out of debt and living in that way. And so what encouragement would you have today for someone who n needs to continue to make those decisions but they feel really hard right now? So if I distill down all the mental health diagnostics, if you will, not all of them, but most of the big ones, like depression, anxiety, those kind of things, they're just simply our body trying to get our attention. And it usually tries to get our attention for one of three things. It's an alarm system, right? Mm -hmm. But it's trying to get our attention for, it's found us without other people, and mm -hmm. we're co-regulated to live in the presence of other people. You found yourself alone, and if, yep. if you had woke up on the plains of Minnesota, right? Yeah, 3,000 years ago and your tribe left you, you're yeah. going to die, yeah. right? It, it, your brains know that. Yeah. We're not safe. You're in an abusive relationship. You're in a, an abusive work environment. Um, and the third one is autonomy. You don't get to make decisions about what happens to you tomorrow, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. If I owe somebody money, it was this light bulb moment I had six or seven months ago. My brain knows we're not safe. My brain knows if one thing gets sideways, we are without a home, we're without vehicles, right? We're without food. My brain knows that I'm not making decisions for tomorrow. Best Buy credit is, yeah. Toyota Motor Company is. Yeah. They're deciding what I do tomorrow. My boss is, not me. Mm -hmm. And our brains will slowly start to buzz the alarms. You're not safe, you're not safe, yeah. you're not safe. And so getting out of debt for me used to be this idea of financial freedom. Right? I can do whatever I want. Yeah. I can yeah. give recklessly. Yeah. It's become a much deeper proposition for me. Now yeah. it's about I can sit with my kids and be fully present. Mm -hmm. I can sleep all night because my brain isn't saying, we're not safe, we're not safe, right. we're not safe. It right. just can go, we can go to sleep. Because yeah. I got other people and I'm not and being abused. 
And so what I would suggest, if you're, if you just got that low level buzz of anxiety all the time, if you have that low level buzz of this dying, just depression, like I just don't want to get out of bed. I just don't want to, I don't want to live the life that I've created for myself or that I've inherited. Begin to look at ways you can unhook yourself from other people making decisions in your life. And that starts with who do I owe money to, yeah. right? And so I'm not going to go to Black Friday because I value my sleep more, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to buy a bunch of junk on uh, on Cyber Monday, but I've budgeted for it and mm -hmm. I've planned for it and 99% of I'm going to give it away, yeah. right? It's a totally different mental health proposition. Yeah. So pay your debts off when you'll see your marriage get better and you'll be a more present parent and yeah. you'll be less fired up when that guy cuts you off on the highway, right? It right. just changes your right. whole life. Yeah, or when your boss is... Well, you have a great boss, but you know. <laughs> but but I've, but I've had yeah. moments yes. where me and Dave got crossed. Okay. <laughs> and I've had moments where I'm like, I could just leave. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've had other bosses in the past where I went home and told my wife, we're officially on the market. And she goes, yeah. all right. Yeah. Like, it's just a... You have that flexibility. Because yeah. I can, right. Right? right? Yeah, I can. And I think that's, I mean, probably what Tom and I have a hard time maybe describing sometimes is you don't understand the peace that comes mm -hmm. when you get out of debt. Like, you don't even know the burden you're carrying around when you're in debt. And I think we were the same way too. We we're like, okay, when we get out of debt, then we can, we're gonna buy all the things, you know, that we had been putting off and delaying. And then we get there and we're like, oh, we're good. You yeah, know? It's yeah. just like, oh yeah, it wasn't the stuff. All along, it wasn't actually the stuff. Yeah. So it, it gets easier and easier. And then it's super easy to keep your house, house simplified too, so. I just, you keep un, uh, unattaching yes. yourself from all yes. these other things that say, yeah. now you have value, now yeah. you got worth. Nah, that stuff yeah. comes inside out. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Awesome. Well, so good to get to visit with you today. And of course, we'll put a link to John's uh, uh, YouTube show. <laughs> hey, can I tell you, thank you for like giving incredible folks like a, a pathway to a more peaceful life. Yeah. It's such a gift, man. Yeah. It's such a gift. No, we have you. such a rattling yeah. system, right? Mm -hmm. That's just so anxious all the time. And your calm presence of, hey, here's like another way we can do this. Such a gift, man. Thank, thank you, you for that. Awesome.